Welcome to Ink Pulp Instruction. I'm Sean Crystal. Do you want to be a professional comic book artist? Do you want to understand why comic book artists have thick areas of a line and thin areas of a line? And lastly, do you want to learn how to make those thin and thick areas of a line? If so, then watch this free chapter from my intro to inking video that focuses on line variation which is basically knowing when to use thin and thick areas of a line. So I mentioned the, the theory of when to use thins and thicks with your line variation. So I'm just going to demonstrate very quick on, on a very simple drawing of a profile of, of a face. And normally when I ink this way is I do a first pass to get the the initial line, the dead weight in, and then, then I'll build. But you're going to see me, and I'm hoping this is something that's visible. But I am playing with pressure as I go in. So as I come into the drawing, I kind of lean in as I lay down, and then I put my pressure in. And as I know I'm coming to a thin point, I put my pressure up. Now, when you break a line, this is this is something you have to master in inking, is how to break a line to, to stop inking, because it's getting to a point where you've pulled it for a while and you can go no further. And you got to learn how to pick up right where that line went off and make it as seamless as possible. But when you're working this way with microns and building the thicknesses, you have some room for error because when you build a thickness and you can sort of build that bump out. So what I'm going to do now is kind of lean in as it come close to that line and then pull it out. So it's pretty seamless. I can see uh, my eyes are so in tune with my inking. I can see a little bit of a, a small gap there. I doubt you can even see that but I'll fix that in the thickness. So I'm just doing a pass over here. Okay. And you will become familiar with, if you're new to this, the death grip. And the death grip is how you hold your tool for a while and your hand will hurt and you'll get pains and then it'll go away as you get confident and get comfortable so there's just kind of a an initial dead uh dead kind of dead weight pass on it so let's say we have light coming down onto this form from that direction that's going to let me know where I need to do my shadows. So this forehead area here is kind of hitting the light. So I know as I tuck away from the light, I'm going to get thicker. And I'm going to exaggerate the thicknesses a bit so that you can see. I mean, subtlety is how you probably want to work in the long run. But for instructional purposes, I think exaggerating makes the point really well. So as I come back around this curve, I am tapering into the other line and lifting it up just like we created that initial tapered line, like that. So there you would have some shadow. So now as we're coming down the bridge of the nose into the point that really hits the light, I'm going to build it slightly so that this region is where the highlight would be. And you can even toy with letting uh, a line break entirely so that a highlight would just be seen as an absence of line. And maybe I'll go with some white when we're done to give you that, that sensation. So now as we come around the bottom of the nose, once again, we're building that shadow. Just want to get in there. Okay, good. Now we're dealing with the lip, so it's the same sort of thing. The corner of that lip will catch the highlight, and then as we tuck away from the light on the underside of the upper lip, we'll go into shadow again. The bottom lip catching a little bit of light, but as we taper away from it on the underside of that form, we'll get dark again. And I'm going to smooth the transition here. 
a little bit. What you don't want to do and what you want to avoid is uh, uh, fast stops. Areas where the thick just stops and then it's thin. You need a smooth transition. Even if it's a hard corner like this, there should be some element of transition. As we come into the top part of the chin, light is going to hit it. But of course, and here's that little bump from before. So we're going to start to build that line down here. And what we have is a shadowed form on the underside of the chin. Let me just smooth that transition a little bit. And boom. Now, quick note, um, you want to use good paper. Because all that building and stroking of the, the pen against the surface of the paper, if it's crummy paper, it will start to degenerate the paper and shred it up and peel it up a bit. So I, I really like to use really high quality paper. I'm using Strathmore 500 series Bristol board, and this is a semi-smooth surface. Um, with my typical brushwork, I use a very rough uh, surface of the same type of board. But like I said, we'll cover that stuff in my next video on rendering and my true technique. This is a very beginner video. So that's essentially what a, vary, a, a line with varied weight is and how to use it. So you can see it just takes practice of building. Now that you have a better understanding of what line variation is, would you like to learn more basic inking techniques? If so, head to inkpulp.tv, link below, the home of Ink Pulp Instruction, where you can buy my basic inking techniques video and many, many more. Welcome to Ink Pulp Instruction. Keep craft alive.